Well, hello, my name is Bill Pritchett. I'm uh, the key account manager for John Crane, uh, based in the Southeast in the Atlanta area. Uh, this webinar is intended for all of the East Coast uh, municipalities, uh, city managers, financial managers, that type of thing. So we're gonna be focusing more on not really the technicalities of SEALs or the installation of SEALs, we're gonna be focusing on how we can save you both maintenance costs and operations costs with current technology. Uh, the outline is, is pretty simple. This should probably be a 15 or 20 minute presentation. Get right to the point. Um, we're gonna teach you the real basics about SEALs. I call it SEALs 101, SEALs and packing. Um, show you a few of the different types of designs that are out there. Um, understand what the SEAL flush requirement is and how much flush you guys actually use. And then I've got a selection chart uh, we go get into some cost savings and then we'll have a, a live question session at the end. So getting right into SEALs, SEAL basics. Um, what's the concept of a SEAL? It's to keep water or liquids from leaking, leaking out of a pump or into a ship, for example. So I've got three pictures here. Um, I was in the Philippines a couple of years ago on vacation and I saw this guy out there fishing. And he came in and I, I was so curious. I went up and looked at that. That's his boat, handmade, and that's his livelihood. He uh, hangs a, a net off the back. You can see that little hook there. And he drags his net, gets his fish, and he has dinner. That's it. That technology is thousands of years old, and there's nothing wrong with it. It works just fine. Um, the next slide, or the next picture in the center here, is a stern shaft, um, typical ship, right? You got to have a propeller to make it go forward. Well, that propeller has an engine inside the ship, so you got a hole in the hull, and you've got to seal that hole or the ship's going to sink. So in that case, you're keeping the water from outside getting inside. And then the third simple picture I've got is uh, that's uh, the wall of a typical pump, and you've got your shaft, so you've got your impeller on this side inside the pump. Over on this side, you've got an electric motor, diesel engine, some type of driver over here and you got to have a hole in the in the side of the wall to get that power transmitted through there that hole of course creates a leak path okay so um on this slide we have uh we take that basic concept of just a shoulder on the shaft and we actually start making seals with it so in the first slide we've got the process fluid on one side we've got the atmosphere over here motor impeller on the left and those rings right there are, is what uh, we call packing, engineered rope. And that's what actually creates the seal right there. And those, those, that packing is going to leak a little bit, so keep it cool. So there, there is a little bit of a mess to take care of, but uh, typically it's not a big deal. And the next slide is um, a basic concept of a mechanical seal. Basically, it's just the shoulder on the shaft. And that shoulder runs up against the housing and creates a seal between the two faces. That face rotates, this one is stationary. Here's a close-up of it. And in between those two faces is a microscopic layer of fluid to keep those faces cool and keep them from burning up. In a perfect world, that's all we would need. But obviously those faces are gonna wear. That shaft is gonna, for lack of a better term, wobble. So that you're never gonna have a nice perfect square mate right there. So what we do, is we create a mechanical seal that compensates for, for wearing faces and for uh, shaft wobble and so forth and keeps those two mated faces together and keeps the seal. So here are some basic seal designs. Back to the packing. Here we are again. Here's the impeller and the fluid on this side. The electric motor will be on this side. There's the gland is what we call it that tightens up, keeps that packing tight against the shaft um, and this is a lantern ring and that's where the external fluid is pumped into the packing to keep it cool and that fluid goes uh, both towards the um, process fluid and some of it actually goes out onto the ground too okay uh, the component seal is this part with the spring and the black ring right there that's uh, the actual seal itself that fits on the shaft uh, like where the packing would be in this picture. And this part is called the mating ring, and that's stationary, and that would fit basically where that gland is. 
and these two faces mate together and that's what creates a seal. There's in this particular design, there's a rubber bellows on the ID that seals off the shaft and that spring keeps these two faces together and, and compensates for wear as the seal faces wear. Uh, the third picture is what I call an ANSI or a standard industrial cartridge seal. These component seals have been around for decades and the cartridge seals uh, were well, probably in the 70s is when they came on strong. The big advantage is they're preset. These seals, you have to measure them and, and they're fairly difficult to install. These cartridge seals, you simply slide them on the shaft, bolt them down, remove the uh, spacer and start up the pump. It's almost that easy. Uh, a big step forward in installation and reliability. This is the same thing over here on API cartridge seal. API stands for American Petroleum Institute, and it's simply just a much heavier duty version of, of the ANSI cartridge, but it's the same concept. Bolt it on, take the spacer out, and away you go. One of the lit, uh, more current concepts or designs is the split seal. And the idea here is it's split in half, and you can install that seal without pulling the pump. All these other seals, excluding the packing, all these other seals, you have to pull the pump to get the seal in or out. Not a big deal on small equipment. On larger equipment, where you've got four, five, six inch shaft, you, uh, you're renting cranes, you've got crews, you've got to shut the plant down. It becomes a big ordeal. So a lot of times uh, they, they opt for split seals. Not the cheapest version, um, but in the end, long run, it, it does save you money because you don't have to rent cranes and all that kind of stuff. Current demand and uh, uh, industry trends. Um, obviously, you guys want to reduce the actual cost of the seals, the maintenance cost. You want to reduce labor uh, to get those seals in and out, working on the pumps. You want to increase mean time between failure or the length of the seals. How long are they going to last? You don't want them to last days or weeks. You want them to last years. Um, field repair repairability um, is a big deal. Some some of my competitors insist that you they send you guys send the seals back to them for repair which means you have to have a lot of spares uh gets to be a hassle uh simplified installation that goes back to the cartridge seals uh simplified flush systems i'll, I'll show you a picture on that shortly um and then this is where this is where the industry is going this is really important reduce or eliminate external seal flush all of those seals that i've shown you so far including the packing require an external flush. And I'll, the next slide gets into uh, cost and, and how much flush you guys actually use. Uh, this is really important, especially out west. I just happened to see this article this week. Uh, mega drought persists. Lake Mead is gonna be at record low levels this year, which means they're gonna cut water back even more to the southwest. It's, it's they're, they're really in trouble out there and so, uh, using water or redu reduction in water usage is critical out there. Not so much here, at least not yet. Um, once again, local spares, repair kits, uh, factory support uh, is a big deal. Um, and, and this is something that is kind of the point of this whole presentation is not just one seal design or technology is going to fit. One size does not fit all. You're going to have to have split seals on larger equipment, you can have flushless seals on some of your other equipment, and I'll, I'll get into how we uh, select the different types of seals uh, in, in a slide coming up here. And Crane is really the only manufacturer that has, I call it from packing to cutting edge. We have, obviously we have the old engineered rope packing all the way up to flushless or near flushless uh, seals. And I'll show you a couple of those designs. Here's just a, a simple chart. I stole this from the pulp and paper industry. This is cost of water. Uh, what is it uh, per per thousand gallons? The the point is, it all depends on where you are in the in the country as to how much water costs. Now, you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, typically don't buy water, but there's still a cost associated. You have to take the water that you're taking out of your process, clean it up, and then reinject it back into the seals. All of that. Cost money, extraction, filtration, pumping, circulation, pipe valves and fittings, that whole system costs a lot of money. And where the real money is, is in um, getting that water back out of your, your um, process. Here's a couple typical uh, 
flush designs. Um, they call it plan two, which is dead, which means no flush. You just plug it off. That's it. Okay, that would be ideal for you guys, and you don't have to deal with it. Um, and then there's what they call bypass from discharge or return from discharge, <clears throat> which is an internal circulation within the pump. You guys don't use that too much because a lot of your pumpage is dirty. And so that, that uh, bypass line would get plugged up with garbage. Um, so you don't typically use that too much. What you guys do use a lot of is what we call plan 32 or external flush. And this is where the water, the water that has been cleaned up comes in through a line and, and is injected into the seal right at the faces to keep the uh, seal clean and cool. Um, this is an amazing statistic. One gallon per minute per inch of shaft, a three inch shaft equals three gallons a minute or over one and a half million gallons of water a year per seal, per pump. So if you've got a medium sized plant with say 500 pumps, you start doing the math, it adds up real quick. So I, I redid the math here again, one gallon, half a 500,000 gallons per year, et cetera. Uh, I'm going to say it again, per pump. Um, and there's lots of hidden costs involved there. Um, the, it really kind of goes against the whole idea of a wastewater plant. A wastewater plant is a dewatering plant, basically, right? You're getting the, the solids and the water out of there as much as possible before you ship the cake off to wherever to be processed. Um, I understand that uh, I was talking to a friend of mine out in Orange County and he um, he said that every 1% of fluid taken out of the cake or your end product equals millions of dollars worth of, of process, uh, you know, hauling expenses and processing and, and so forth. So getting rid of seal flush is really where um, the industry is going, especially out west, and it's going to happen here too. Um, however, here's my caveat. However, flushless or ultra low flush seals need to be selected and engineered correctly. That's where we can help you. That's where uh, John Crane uh, field reps and distributors that are trained in this industry can really help you select the correct seal for the correct application. Here is an example of a seal of a pump where the selection was not done right. This was a uh, digester. I think it's about a three and a half inch uh, shaft. The pump was sold as a quote unquote flushless seal. And well, that lasted about a month, two months. And the seal got packed with solids. And that starved the seal from any kind of uh, seal flush. The face is burned up, the seal failed. It was a mess. Um, and I went in there and explained to him, I said, this pump is not set up properly. You need to have a flush. And they did not like that. Uh, here it is afterwards, after we cleaned it up and, and uh, they put a flush on and it works fine. Could this pump be run flushless? Yes, if it's set up properly. I'm not gonna get into all the technical details right now, but there are pumps in the next digester that have no flush, if you set it up correctly. And John Crane, of course, can help you with that. Here is a um, what we call a dual seal. Uh, it, depending on how the pressures are set up, it's either tandem or double. Uh, tandem seal is what's shown here. You've got your um, process pressure highest. The buffer or barrier pressure in between the two seals is a little bit lower. And then, of course, you have atmosphere out here. So I'm just showing you this. This is very typical in some of your tougher applications. The, the sludge and the higher uh, solids. You tend to use uh, dual seals because that's the only thing that survives. So they're complicated, they're expensive, and they're um, it's they're not the easiest, but it's really one of the only things that work. However, we have a couple different flushless designs. This one here, this is more the American version. We call it the 4615. This is more the European version called the SB1A. Both of them, they do have a flush port if you need it, but typically under 2%, if you set the pump up properly, you don't need a flush. 2% uh, solids, that is. And here's a picture of, here's the impeller, here's the shaft, there's the seal. 
Right, there's the pump housing. No flush. What they do is they open up the back of the impeller and they have what's called an excluder uh, or, or just a tapered stuffing box. And you open this area up so that the fluid can move around freely and, and uh, doesn't get packed in there. And um, that's that's really the key to, to some of these flushless seals is making sure that that fluid is uh, moving freely through there and the solids don't get packed in. Um, the other key is in this particular design, there's really no moving parts uh, to get plugged up. That's a metal bellows that replaces the spring and that bellows acts as an accordion and ex um, as it compresses, it ex uh, expels any solace that might be trying to, to build up in there. In the European design, it's just clean, simple. There's nothing to um, all the springs and, and all the mechanical part is on the atmosphere side of the seal so you, it doesn't see um, the dirty fluids. We also have what's called a um, uh, upstream pumper or a ultra low flush seal. And let's see if this video works. Uh, okay, this is just a little laminate animation. These are the faces inboard. Remember that dual seal I just showed you. So you've got a stationary face and a rotating face. And on the rotating face, we've got some spiral grooves etched into it, and it acts as a mini impeller. And what that does is it takes the barrier fluid and pumps it across the faces and into the process. And that keeps those inboard faces nice, nice and clean and cool. The big advantage is instead of a two or three or four gallon a minute flush, this will be one gallon per day, GPD, gallons per day, huge huge improvement in, in uh, uh, how much water you inject into your system. Because every gallon that you put into your system eventually needs to be um, taken out. Um, all of the, uh, the uh, external flush systems that Plant 32 I told you about, they all need uh, pressure control and flow control and a pressure gauge. And, and what we've come up with is a very simple little device that um, takes all of those components and puts it into one. And it's just one less thing for you guys to deal with. You don't have to deal with check valves, and pressure control valves, and elbows, and nipples, and all this kind of stuff. It's all one piece, and you just have an inlet and an outlet. Set it up, and away you go. So here's a summary of the different components or different types of seals. We will go all the way from packing, component seals. That was that one I showed you where you uh, have the two different pieces. Cartridge seals, which are the preset ones. Split seals, which you can install without pulling the pump out. Um, we have, I call them uh, not really cartridge seals, but uh, we have seals that they really just two halves, two rotating halves and two stationary halves. And they're much easier to install. The old split seals, you had to build them on the shaft, O-ring, face, and springs, and it's very complicated. That's, it's come a long way. Uh, and then of course we have the flushless seals that I just told you about. And we have the uh, simple flush system, and we have the new ultra low flush or the upstream pumper seal design. Uh, here is a selection chart that I came up with. Across the top is uh, below three inches and above three inches. Below three inches in the lower solids, you don't need a flush. You really don't. You can just eliminate all of those. Um, if you have a taper or big bore stuffing box. Remember I told you about that. The standard stuffing box, you run the risk of solids building up around the seal. Not recommended. You probably should have a flush. In larger pumps, I say three inches. You know, maybe it's four. It's really up to your plant. Um, that's when you start getting into split seals. And yes, split seals do need a flush. Um, as you go up in solids, you get into heavier and heavier duty seals. Until you get to the really tough applications, that's where we recommend that upstream pumper, um, where you you still have a flush, but it's only a gallon a day, and you don't have to uh, deal with all millions of gallons a year getting taken out of your system. And that's about it. We've got uh, we're a 1.2 billion dollar company. We've got branches all over the world. We've got distributors all over the world. We have over 6,000 employees. 
the point of this slide is obviously we've got you covered as far as service goes and stock. And that's about it. Here's my contact information, my email, my cell phone. Feel free to call me or text me or email me anytime. And if you have any questions, we'll go live right now and we'll take it from there. Thanks for your time.